You're listening to Wealth at Work, a show designed to help advisors think, make decisions, and cast a vision to create a business for the future. Hosted by financial planner, author, speaker, and CEO of Advisor 2X, Ross Marino. Today on Wealth at Work, we are joined by Megan and Alex. Hello, Megan and Alex. Hey, Ross. Hey, hey, Ross. Looking forward to having both of you out at Wealth at Work. You're doing a session on marketing, and that's really one of the topics that no matter how many sessions we have on marketing, when we ask for feedback, you always get, we need more marketing sessions. So looking forward to having both of you on there. Let's start with a quick introduction. Megan and Alex, if you could take 60 seconds, tell us who you are and what you do. Sure thing. I can I can get started. Ross, thanks for having Alex and I here. Uh, my name is Megan Richter. I am one of the co-founders here at Intentionally. We are a growth marketing agency that works with financial advisors, financial services companies, tech players in this space, really helping them market and grow their business. Um, so we work with firms who are just getting started, firms that have been doing and refining their business efforts um, for a number of years. So we see a lot in different firms and work a lot with firms and excited to share with you a little bit today on the podcast and in the event later this year. Excellent. Alex? Yeah. So more marketing is like more cowbell, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm uh, Alex Merguia. I'm managing principal of McLean Asset Management, but I'm also co-founder of the RISA, Retirement Income Style Awareness. The other co-founder is, is Wade Fowler and, my, and myself, and that's effectively a, a personality assessment tool for retirement planning, almost like the DISC, but for retirement income planning. And it's something that uh, with Megan, we're getting it off the ground. And so uh, we're excited to use her skill set to see how we can launch this uh, into the financial planning world and beyond. Excellent. Well, I just had the pleasure before we pressed record here of speaking with Wade Fow and learning a little more about the RISA tool. And, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. But I, I mentioned to Wade when we were talking after he shared it with me, I just said, well, duh because it filled a need that seems so obvious that hasn't been filled before and it's so necessary. So looking forward to chatting about that. But today we're going to talk about marketing and there's a million ways, Megan, to do marketing. I see little nuggets here and there. I read articles. I watch YouTube videos. It seems like there's so many opportunities to market. But mm -hmm. my problem is, is I can only do so many things and only so many things actually matter to me. So how do I make a decision or what's the decision tree to where should I focus my marketing efforts? Yeah, that is a, a great question, Ross, um, and something that we hear all the time from a number of firms and advisors and, and partners that we work with. And one of the things I always like to start um, with, and this is something that we've been able to work with Alex's team directly on when they've been promoting the RISA or some of the advisors that um, are using the RISA we've been able to work on them with is this concept around um, thinking about what it takes to own your target audience. You guys listening in are also consumers as addition to um, advisors, and you know what it's like getting a million one marketing messages a day. You're getting asked to put your contact information here. You're clicking on ads when you're on social media. There's so many messages out there. And so when you think about your business or your marketing, um, it's really hard these days to own that audience and keep them captured and engaged. So um, when we talk and work with a lot of firms, the biggest thing that we say when it comes to generating leads and true growth is thinking about every single touch point that you have at your disposal and making sure you're capturing that person's contact information and tracking how they're engaging with you. So whether you're doing an email marketing campaign, you're spending dollars on advertising, you want to make sure anything you do is capturing it, pulling it into your own database. So you're cultivating and building an audience over time that you can continue to share and mobilize your message to. Um, and that's something that we spend a lot of time with Alex and wait on. We think about the retirement income community and spreading the news about the RISA and what's going on. Um, we think about the advisors that they're working with, trying to spread the news about the services and capabilities they have to offer. Everything we ultimately come back to is how do you build those lists? How do you capture that audience? And then how do you appropriately cultivate them? Um, so all things that will kind of go go over more in depth in our Wealth at Work session together. But I would say that's one of the fundamental places to get started. Yeah, and I think I'll throw in real quick, Alex, and then I'd like your comment on that is, is I, I just type down, I take notes a couple different times, capture that information, capture that information, capture yeah. that information, because 
marketing, creating content. Hey, I love to do that stuff. I love doing recordings. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you're not capturing the information, I'm not sure you're actually moving your business forward like it could be. So what do you think, Alex? No, I, I think you're 100% correct. Uh, there's a couple of thoughts going through my head here in, in some sort of amorphous order. And maybe when it comes out of my mouth, it'll, it'll sound linearly, right? <laughs> linear. But uh, just going back to that, uh, capturing information. Listen, I'll take a, hun a list of 100 emails over 10,000 Twitter followers any day. Yeah. Uh, you know, when it comes to that. Uh, so there it is on that standpoint. But I think one of these, you know, we, we use certain terms, right? Capture and, you know, have, you know, own the clients and stuff like that. I, I, I think of it and, and I agree. I mean, we're just, you know, to some, some extent it could be semantics, but I think once you identify your very specific persona, I mean, yeah. go do the thrill of what, what, who do you want to capture? What do these people read? What do these people do? And get yourself in the mind of this person. Then it helps, it helps set you up for the most important thing. I think in this marketing to capture information, which is add value. Yes. I, I think a lot of people, I think you just download this, download that, download this. And you've been there. I mean, it's like, so what, right? And you don't even half the time and 80% of the time, I, I venture to say you never like read it. You just uh -huh. have it in your inbox. Your market is unread. A month later, you delete it because you're like, I can't see this anymore. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. And so the reality is that didn't add value. Yes, you got an email, but so it goes. And so to me, the sale is done during the nurturing sequence, which is what Megan was talking about. I, I, I think Megan will, will, will agree for what Wade and I do when we're marketing this. And I, I throw in Bob French as well. We're giving so much value before there's an ask. Yes. It's not just an ebook and, and call it a day. We give a lot of value. I mean, I mean it's, it's a whole thing in and of itself where people are like, you're giving all that away for free. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. I don't th worry about this pay line or something like that. I give as much away because you don't have the right. And I've said this many times. You don't have the right to ask for anything until you've given them something of value. And I think people lose sight of that. I think people, oh, I've got 10 emails. Now I'm going to ask him to spend $10,000 on some sort of planning engagement. When yeah. have you ever done that personally? You know, yeah. think about it, right? You, you need to develop that that nurturing trust, no like and trust kind of nurturing sequence. And until you do that and given value, you don't have the right. So even though you get information, people will give you information. It's an exchange of value, right? They're giving you currency for this information. Now, yeah. if that information doesn't add to their bank, You've lost it. And I think that's a dynamic that people don't really think about. They just think, I'm going to give whatever it is. And there he goes. I have their email. Now they're, you know, ha, ha, ha. Now they're mine. You know, that kind of thing. It doesn't yeah. work like that. That's yeah. Kind of what I would add in that caveat of what Megan was talking about. And I'm so glad you did, Alex, because I think that that's, you know, that's the magic. We talk about magic in marketing. That's the magic is not only capturing, yes, an email address, but getting them to engage, get excited and want to speak with you, no matter what you're selling, no matter what you're promoting, whatever you're asking them to do. And I think that's one of the things that we're most excited to share about with the audience who's going to be attending Wealth at Work is the capability of what the RISA can do to be that value add for advisors if they put that in the forefront of their marketing tool. So Alex, I don't know if you want to spend a minute or two talking a little bit about like what the RISA enables through the assessment process and how advisors can either use it right. to better well, curate and know their audience, whether it's a prospect or a client. Well, interestingly enough, as a marketing tool, that's how the RISA, Ross, that's how the whole thing started. Maybe Wade didn't speak like that, but we have a, a retirement researcher, which is a membership site. Mm -hmm. And going down to personas, Wade and I were getting so many questions about, should we do this? Should we do that with somebody's financial plan? And we didn't know the answer to that. I mean, you have to do a financial plan to really get down in it. And so the answer was, it depends. So we thought, why don't we create a lead magnet mm -hmm. that will kind of, you know, section these people out so we can then have drip campaigns relative to their interest. That's, that's how the research really started. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it became this research endeavor. But then from there, we realized... We can productize this because it's a great way for for an advisor to provide to a prospect, hey, what's your retirement income style? Right away, there's a what, what? I have a style? What is that all about, right? And people love the, you know, who's your favorite Avengers character as a investor? You know, that, that kind of silliness, right? But, you know, this this takes it to a level of seriousness that, you know, hasn't been there before. And, and people just love that. And so right away, there's value because they're getting self-discovery in that. And it's self-discovery that can be put to practical application. 
And so, yeah, the, the Risa is actually a great lead magnet in that manner. And, and something that, and that there's a little different, you know, and another marketing term is different is better than better kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> and the reality is, what do you get right now in terms of calls to action from advisors out there? Here's a risk tolerance questionnaire. Take three questions and we'll slot you into a magical portfolio that's made just for you. Mm -hmm. I think everyone gets the joke that that's hooey. You know what I mean? And I can't believe I said that and not the actual word, but so it is, right? Everyone gets that joke. And so I, I think having something like this that's very personal and lets the, the that sort of consumer identify and learn something right off the bat about about him or herself, I think that's that's very important in that dynamic. And it sets a stage of, hey, this person's credible, this person's serious, and it helps you really be bespoke with regards to your nurturing sequences after. Yep. Well, I think when we look at what the RISA tool is, and we're not going to dive that that deep into it, but I think I can give a, a parallel for people who are listening with advisors is if you're going to do any type of individual wealth management, or if you want someone to have any access to trying to determine what portfolio is appropriate for me investing in a 401k plan, you're probably going to start with a risk tolerance questionnaire. And really, those are great for accumulation. And that's what they were designed for. And in the very basic sense, they shift the conversation to what really matters. People aren't just thinking about total return. They're actually thinking about risk because bear markets are a thing. Um, I don't know the future, but I'm going to predict they will be a thing in the future. And that's what happens. And we have to have this conversation with people. And you're able to do that during accumulation. But as people retire, so many of the 401k advisors out there, they're now either offering wealth management individually, or they're offering it on the plan level. Now they're talking about distribution and income management. And I'm not sure the risk tolerance questionnaire is really equipped for that. What do you think, Alex? I, I, I think you're absolutely right. And in the way you've explained that, I'm like, is Wade in your head? Because <laughs> it, <laughs> Wade is right now in, in his office, like almost like kind of cataplectic way because because you were, you were, he was like, Trans going through a trance through you. No, I, I think it's fantastic. I, I, I agree with it 100%. I can't add anything more to that. It was a lovely explanation. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about it because I think it's something different, and uh, you know, different is better than better. That that that's a new line there. I do like <laughs> that, but uh, we need to engage people. We need to do something different from time to time, and that's certainly one way to do that. Now, there there's a million tools out there. There there's a lot of technology, Megan. There's so many different ways to market. There's social media. There's email. There's in person stuff. I I couldn't even name off the list. It just overwhelms me. Where do I start? Are there some basics that I should say, this is what's going to work for pretty much any advisor out there? Yeah, I would say one thing that's pretty universal um, is having not just some type of website, but a landing page where you're driving traffic to. So whether it's a content download of research or value, it's you're promoting the RESA, having some type of landing page, whether it's connected to your website, whether you're using a um, landing page via your marketing automation technology, there's a million and one options out there that will will run through some of the best ones in the Wealth at Work session that we, we run together. But I would say thinking about having a place to drive all your traffic to, to capture those leads, to provide that value and, and that content is really key. Um, and something Alex and I have talked about in a number of sessions to um, RISA users is optimizing that, that page and kind of going through the psychology of decision-making through a page model. So I would say one of the things that you would need, no matter what type of marketing campaign you're running, is some type of landing page to articulate and show what you're offering for value and capture that, that information. Well, it's going to be an interesting session. I'd imagine there'll be a lot of people in there because as I said, to start, no matter how much marketing you put on there, the advisors say, can we get more marketing? So <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Megan, Alex, we'll see you in October. Excellent. Thanks for having us. Likewise. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Wealth at Work. The information covered and posted represents the views of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views and opinions of Advisor 2X. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investment advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.